Hey all, this is part 18, and it's the last part in working with arrays lesson. Congratulations on making it this far. Um, some very heavy lessons that we've just been going through, and especially this one. Um, but you do want to think about it not as things that you're memorizing, but again, things that you can come back to having done at least once in the event that you come across a situation where you need to use the index of method, split an array, um, remove the last element, and basically any of the stuff that we've been doing so far. If you remember the index of method for strings, this is going to be very familiar. If you don't, I would advise going back and doing the strings lesson first, but in any case, uh, index of will tell us the index of an element within an array. So we call index of method on the array and pass an element that we're looking for. In this case, the element is located in index two, so that's what we get. If the element that we are looking for is not present within the array, as it is in this case, or as it is not in this case, we're going to get negative one. A very good thing to keep in mind. And we can also do something where instead of finding the first found version, which is what we're doing uh, by default when we pass one element, uh, when we pass one argument to index of, if we pass two in, uh, arguments to index of, the first one is going to be the element that we're looking for. The second argument is going to be the index where we should start looking, or we should say after which we should start looking. So in this case, uh, we're going to be looking for an element one, but after index two. So if we run this, we're going to see that we don't get the index of one at element at index zero. We get it at index three. So let's throw a couple actual real variables on here. One is going to be a list of ingredients. We're going to be searching for an ingredient called flour, which is located in index two. So if we run this, we'll see ingredients dot index of search ingredient. It's going to be two. In the event that we do not find the ingredient that we're looking for, we're going to get negative one. So pecans is not part of this array. So if we look for the index of pecans, we're going to see that it's negative one because it's not there. And again, I'm not really sure why this is, uh, I say again, it's like the fifth time I've recorded this video, problems all abound. But I'm not sure why this isn't formatted the same way. It's like an error with the way the markdown's being parsed by the learn platform, and I don't really know how to fix it yet. So you might notice that it doesn't really look like these. Uh, it does work uh, when you paste into Replit though. So that's all we're gonna care about. In this case though, let's consider we have an array of work orders that are coming in and that at a certain point there's a system reset. So the first thing we're gonna do is find the index of the system reset with this line. Then we're going to try to find the index of the first repair after the reset. So what we do then is take the index of the system reset add one to it and supply that as the second argument to our second call to index of. So we're looking for repair after the system, the, the index of the system reset plus one, which basically means start looking after the index of the system reset. So once we do that and we run it, we'll see that the index of the first repair after the reset is four. Excellent, so here's our last coding challenge. We are going to, well, for this, for this lesson, we are going to complete a function that takes in two parameters, an array and an element, and returns the index of the array where the element can be found. Your function should create an index variable and assign it to a call of the index of method on the array and passing element as an argument and return the index variable. Below are examples of the code running. Assuming you will have completed the described function, apply index of to array. One last time, for now anyway, we're gonna copy this double of our function we're going to copy our test cases and we're going to follow our pseudocode. So variable index is equal to array dot index of element return index. So if we run this, we should get one and negative one respectively. We do. So let's copy our completed function, paste it in there, and that ice is our cupcakes. Anyway, Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.